Dear student, Assalamu alaikum. Today I will be teaching you depolarization, repolarization, and hyperpolarization. This concept is very strong in medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, nursing, and of course, allied health profession. Uh, you understand that uh, cell have certain environment. If I represent this as a nerve cell, you see here is neuron, there may be nerve to nerve junction and there may be nerve to effector organ junction which I have not shown. So, this is a typical cells, this extracellular environment, this is intracellular environment and extracellularly the sodium ion concentration is high and intracellularly the potassium ion concentration is high. Now, the chloride ion do exist both inside and outside as it exists like sodium and potassium. There are certain receptors present at the level of the surface of the cells. These receptors may be either excitatory or inhibitory. Regarding this, these receptors you see here I have drawn it as cholinergic receptor once you style choline come and attach here. So, there is copper sodium channel with it and the sodium goes inside. I will be teaching you this mechanism in the next slide, event by event. There may be uh, certain other receptors operated channels like chloride channels which is coupled with GABA receptors and there are ion exchange channels, there are voltage gated ion cha calcium channels, voltage gated sodium channels. Thus, the environment of the cells have a potential difference between the interior and the exterior and how it is determined it is usually written at his book of medical physiology either by Garten or Simpson right if you go and see that so if you put a micro electrode inside the this nerve and put a, another electrode at the surface of this nerve so a deflection is 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 is, is usually uh, reflected in voltmeter and this deflection tells us that there is a potential difference between the interior and the exterior mean a potential difference exists between the interior of the cells and exteriors of the cell and this is called resting membrane potential here it is nerve and when the nerve is at rest not working a potential difference exists and this is called as resting membrane potential uh, if you recall your uh, secondary school level so there is uh, uh, in physics Voltage, uh, this voltage is equal to I R. I is the current and R is the resistance or I is equal to V R R. R. Voltage is directly proportional to, to the um, transfer of currents keeping the R as constant. Um, record your physics at secondary level as well that there are devices that um, they are used to store charges like capacitors. but but capacitors do store the charges and once it finishes so it, it has to be recharged now it is cell activity regarding the cells activity their previous slide is reflected here as a cell activity and what happened at this uh, cells now once you know that there are different receptors so first once the stimuli reach here the neurotransmitter attached Style cooling is attached with this cholinergic receptors, and then you see sodium ion present outside the cell is now influxed into the interior of the cells, and this is once entered into the interior of the cell, so sodium ion concentration is 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 increased. This leads to uh, depolarization with an action potential generation. You see. And uh, another activity that is important, once there are GABA receptors, so the GABA come and attach with GABA receptors, this leads to the opening of the chloride channels and this opening of chloride channel will lead to influx of chloride ion. Thus, in case of hyperpolarization, the interior now is more negatively charged because of the influx of chloride. Since these are receptor operated, channels whether sodium channels or chloride channels 
and changes in this environment you see internal environment because of the influx of sodium will lead to to the activation of other channels like voltage gated calcium channels thus a cascade of events happens in a regular fashion maintaining maintaining the uh, the cell internal and external environment keep in mind these are resting member and potential when the nerve is at rest now what happens when uh, this these events uh, are are happened so so there is an influx of electrolyte from the exterior into the interior and from the interior uh, like influx of potassium to the exterior so all these influx and efflux lead to the transfer of electrolytes and this transfer of electrolyte carries transfer of current or shift in the voltage thus I have plotted this potential difference which is represented as millivolt on y axis which is a function of time on x axis so what happens in case of depolarization when the nerve was at rest it was usually minus 70 millivolt and there is a stimulus of multiple cascades like one two and three if it goes in steps step one of enough amplitude reaches here then step two of this amplitude reaching here but remember it is almost minus minus 50 or something but not reaching the threshold which is minus uh, 55 now what happens you can have another uh, way that all these it is there is sufficient energy of enough amplitude that reaches this threshold from here till here and reaching the threshold then the nerve fires and once the nerve fires this sudden influx of sodium as we discussed in the last slide and reaching this 30 millivolt plus 30 millivolt when the this the the influx of more sodium ions stops or ceases and once it ceases you see this is followed by an efflux of potassium and once efflux of potassium so this direction changes and it has to come back now once and coming back to its original resting membrane potential is called as a repolarization so there is depolarization and there is repolarization why it is called depolarization early here when the nerve was at rest it was minus 70 millivolt and it reached here so there is a positive pole there is a negative pole and once there was influx of sodium you see it's just like set up integer number zero is here plus is on the right and minus is on this here you see in this bottom and plus is on the top so once there is influx of sodium let's say there is influx of of of, of 10 uh, sodium ion so influx of 10 sodium ion will shift this uh, resting membrane potential from minus 70 to minus 60 so it, now you reach here minus 60 and then you reach here so as different cascade up until you reach the threshold so polarity is not gained rather polarity is decreased so that is why the suffix d is used this is depolarization but depolarization is always associated with an impulse propagation and in case of now the impulse is conduction and here an action potential is generated and actual potential of the nerve will lead to firing of this nerve and this is followed by repolarization now the scientists are very clever they play um, with these nerves using support of certain drugs here in this graph these dotted red dotted line you see uh, the left side is without drug and in the right side these in the presence of certain drugs like benzodiazepines, diazepam, clonazepam and other class of drug like uh, valproates, sodium valproates or so they are nerve stabilizing or membrane also called as membrane stabilizing drugs how they works so as in the previous slide I said that once GABA comes and attach with the GABA receptors so the chloride channel opens and once the chloride channel opens this leads to leads to influx of chloride and the influx of chloride is now reflected here so the membrane potential will come from here to here so it, go, it is coming from minus 70 to minus 90 millivolt now if you give energy of the previous amplitude when the nerve was firing you see one two and three or as a red line as a shape of one in one in one uh, cascade of events so you see 
here one two and three now you will reach here but you won't reach the threshold once this is a gap from here till here so this gap is not filled now now this gap is not filled as so this will there will be no generation of action potential and no generation of action potential mean that the nerve has now been stabilized and this is called as hyperpolarization this concept is very helpful in stabilizing the nerve in case of epilepsy or seizure or fits you see but there is another way around one in the hair we produce hyper hyperpolarization that from minus 70 it goes to minus 90 because now the polarity is more gain from so it is called hyperpolarization the other way around is that you increase this threshold to hair and increasing this threshold hair or elevation of threshold now if you do not hyperpolarize this nerve you see from the beginning the stem membrane potential was minus 70 millivolt here through the cascade of events or energy or of stimuli you see one step second step third step it reached the threshold and fired this nerves and then it is repolarized and prepared for the next process now what happens in case of alleviation now in case of alleviation now the threshold is increased so there are certain drugs that elevate the threshold and these drugs now here you see will now uh, energy from this minus 70 till minus 55 millivolt amplitude of similar similar strength won't be able to reach now this elevated threshold so either you can stabilize the nerve through the hyperpolarization or through the uh, through the elevation of threshold but, but both of these leads to the stabilization of, of nerve so process of depolarization is always associated with an action potential generation whereas it has to be repolarized so that it is prepared for the next event in case of hyperpolarization the interior of the neuron become more negatively charged thus it reached the uh, minus 70 millivolt you see from here to here and this hyperpolarizes the nerve in a strong stimulus is required to excite this cortical neuron otherwise the other way around is you can elevate the threshold and again a strong stimulus is required so the process of depolarization repolarization and hyperpolarization is very is very important in the practice of medicine thank you